Hey everyone, I am so glad to see your smiling faces. I love it when we can come together here in Grace Kids. And I've got to say that I am super excited about this month because we're talking about how we can stand up and face our fears. We just need a little bit of courage. Now courage is this. Courage is simply being brave enough to do what you should do even when you're afraid. Now, look, raise your hand if you've ever needed some courage in your life. <laughs> yeah, me too. Look, you can probably think of some things that make you feel afraid or worried. Maybe there's something that you know you should do and, and you just need the courage to do it. Well, the great news is we don't have to be superheroes to stand up to the things that scare us. We don't just have to be courageous on our own. We can be courageous because we know that God is with us. And I can't wait to learn more about that later on today. But right now, I say we have a little competition. I want us to find out who will win it. Let's have a little race. Here we go. Everybody, start your engines. It's time to play Who Will Win? Monster Truck Edition. Choose your truck to cheer for. First, we have Red Flame. If you think Red Flame is going to win, let me hear you. Next, we have Blue Safari. If you are hoping for a Blue Safari victory, get loud. We also have Purple Guardian. If you think Purple Guardian is going to win, give it a shout. Lastly, we have Green Monster. If you expect a Green Monster win, let me hear you. It's time to race. Three, two, one, go! Make sure you cheer your truck onto the finish line. What a move! Watch out! We have a lead change! It's going to be a close finish! Cheer louder! What a move! Watch out! We have a lead change. It's going to be a close finish. Cheer louder. Blue Safari wins by a nose.
What does fear feel like to you? Maybe it's butterflies fluttering in your stomach, or it might seem like cold fingers creeping up your spine. Fear can feel like a lump in your throat that makes it hard to swallow. Or it might chase thoughts round and round inside your head, refusing to stop. Enough! When you face something hard, fear can show up in a hundred different ways. It can threaten to stop you in your tracks. But you don't have to let fear be the boss of you. When fear shouts, you can't do it, stop. Take a deep breath. Listen for that still, quiet voice of God. God says, be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. When you know that God is with you, you can keep going. You can walk straight through those fears. And when others see you choose to be brave, even when you're afraid, they can see God at work in your life. That's why courage is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud. All right, well, we're moving right along today. Hey, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and then we'll just keep moving, all right? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the day. We thank you for loving us and saving us and allowing us this incredible opportunity to meet here online with our friends. And we're so thankful for this time together. And we ask you to bless this and use this for your honor, for your glory. God, today we ask you to speak to their hearts. God, I pray that you'll help them to sit up and listen when the time comes. God, that you will allow them to hear your words. God, I pray that your words will flow through me. God, I confess to you that I need your help. God, that I'm nothing on my own and I need you to use me today, God. I pray that you'll give me your words to speak to the kids so that we can help them better understand their need for courage. God, that we're not alone, that you're always with us, and that with you, all things are possible. God, I pray today that you'll just help them to listen and that your spirit will speak to their hearts. God, I pray that everything done here today will bring you honor and will bring you glory. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for loving us enough to send your son to die on the cross for our sins. May you be glorified for everything that's done here today. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Well, you know what, kids? I love what David wrote in Psalm chapter 56, verse 4. And I know what you're thinking, Pastor Jamie, why do you always have to read a verse from Psalm after a prayer or whatever before we sing a song? I just like the Psalms. And I love how David always seems to set us up for worship. So listen to this. It's Psalms 56, verse 4. It says, I trust in God. I praise his word. I trust in God. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. He's talking about courage. See, we don't have to fear when we choose to put our trust in God. And God's word is full of promise. So we can trust what God says about us. So let's lift our voices and worship one more time together. And then we're going to jump right into the lesson today. All right, here we go. But he brought me and oh his love for me Oh his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh is free Slay 
Okay, well, we're continuing God's big story together as we look at what happened with God's people, the Israelites. Now, you might remember that God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family. And Abraham's family grew over many generations. And along the way, they became known as the Israelites. And we've seen how God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And last week, we saw how God made a way for them by parting the waters of the Red Sea. And the people traveled through the desert toward the land that God had prepared for them, which was where Abraham had lived so long before. And along the way, God provided food and water for the people. God also gave them rules to show them how to love God and love others. And finally, the people arrived at the land of Canaan, the promised land. Now, this was about two years after they had crossed the Red Sea. Now, again, we've said this before, kids, we're not covering every detail that's happened in this, okay? There's a lot in here that we're not covering right now, and it's just we're hitting the highlights, okay? We don't have time to hit every detail. This is why we encourage you, read the Bible or download an app and listen to the Bible so that you can hear all the pieces in between these stories, okay? But we're hitting the highlights for you so you can piece the stories together, okay? So here we are about two years after they've crossed the Red Sea. And the leader of the Israelites, we know this, we've talked about this, his name was Moses, right? And so God spoke to Moses and told him, send some men to explore the land. God told him in Numbers chapter 13, verse 2, send some men to check out the land of Canaan. I'm giving it to the Israelites and send one leader from each of Israel's tribes. So Moses chose a leader from each of the 12 tribes or different groups of people that made up the nation of Israel. So God told these 12 leaders that he wanted them to explore the land of Canaan and he wanted to know what's the land like. Are the people who live there strong or are they weak? Are there just a few of them or are there a lot? Is the land good or is it bad? What kind of towns do the people live in? Do the, do the towns have high walls? Is the soil good for growing crops or are there trees? Oh, and see if you can bring back some of the fruit. Now look, I'm paraphrasing all of this, but this is some of the information they needed to know. So the men agreed. So for about six weeks, they traveled through this country and the men saw the places where Abraham and his family had lived hundreds of years before. And they found some fruit that they could bring back like Moses had asked them to do. They cut off a bunch of grapes that was so large, it had to be carried on a pole between two guys. Like they put it on their shoulders and carried it between them because it was so big. After 40 days, it was time for these 12 guys to return to the Israelite camp. And so the men, well, they reported to Moses and the rest of the Israelites. And they explained, well, the land was good and it was full of milk and honey and the fruit was just incredible. And they were like, check out these grapes. They're huge. But the news wasn't all good. See, the men had seen what the people who were already lived there they saw them and they were like, these guys are powerful and their cities have these ginormous walls. They were like, we're pretty scared. Well, I shouldn't say that all of them were scared. Most of the 12 men were scared. But see, there were two men who trusted God and they were not worried about what they had seen. These two guys' names were Joshua and Caleb. See, Caleb interrupted the other men. And in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30, he said, look, we should go up and we should take the land. We can certainly do it. <clears throat> but again, these other guys, they were saying, look, the people who live in this land, they're too strong. These men, they began to spread a bad report among the rest of the Israelites. And they said, we're like little bitty grasshoppers compared to these people. So I bet you can imagine what happened next. The other Israelites, well, they totally panicked. They listened to these guys who said that it was hopeless for them to enter into this land, even though God had led them this far. The people now, we've talked about this, they began to do what they did best. 
They began to whine and complain and cried out that it would be better if they went back to Egypt. Well, Joshua and Caleb tried to encourage the people. Listen to what they said in Numbers chapter 14, verses 7, 8, and 9. They said, look, we passed through the land and checked it out. It's very good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he'll lead us into that land. It's a land that has plenty of milk and honey. He'll give it to us. But don't refuse to obey him and don't be afraid of the people of the land. But the people wouldn't listen to Joshua and Caleb. And then something truly incredible happened. The glory of God appeared at the tent of meeting. All the Israelites could see it. I bet that thing, I bet that calmed things down in a hurry, right? <laughs> and God said to Moses in Numbers chapter 14, verse 11, here's what God said. How long will these people not respect me? How long will they refuse to believe in me? Well, Moses begged God to have mercy and forgive the people for what they had done. God agreed to forgive them, but there was a consequence. God said in Numbers 14, 22, not one of these people will see the land I promised to give them. But my servant Caleb has a different spirit. He follows with me, or he follows me with his whole heart. So I'll bring him into the land he went to. See, God would allow Joshua to enter the land as well. Joshua and Caleb were the only ones, these two men were the only ones that had the courage to trust God and believe that God would help them enter Canaan. But in the meantime, Joshua, Caleb, and the rest of the Israelites, they couldn't go into Canaan. They just had to wait and wander through the wilderness, not one year, not two years, not three years not even 10 years, but for 40 years. Yeah, 40 years. And by then, only Joshua and Caleb were still living to lead the new generation, their children, into the land God had promised. When those 40 long years had finally passed, Joshua led the Israelites into Canaan in the promised land. With God's help, they defeated the city of Jericho and the walls fell down and the Israelites won the battle. If you think about it, it took a lot of courage for Joshua and Caleb to stand up when the other Israelites were starting to panic. And these two guys tried to encourage the others to do what God had asked them to do, enter the land of Canaan. They trusted that God was with them, but it was no use. The other Israelites were too scared to listen. And you know what? Sometimes courage means standing up when other people are afraid. It could mean making the wise choice. We hear that a lot in here, right? Yeah, it could mean making the wise choice when others want to make an unwise choice. So here's what I want us to remember today. You can do what you should even when others are afraid. That means we need to trust God and live the way that God has asked us to live, regardless of what other people do. We can set an example for others by following God and having the courage to do what we should do. So today, let's pray and ask God to help us with that, all right? But for right now, let's check out our Story Lab video. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about courage while we take a look at the story of some spies who had a split decision on their mission report. Oh, and look out for this. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about courage, which is being brave enough to do what you should even when you're afraid. So, let me get this straight. Fear is where courage starts? Yep. I could be a courage champion. What are you afraid of? Okay, super weird, but there's this bed post in my aunt's guest room I'm kind of scared of walking past. Um, okay, I mean, people are afraid of all kinds of things. I looked up some of the top fears. Like what? Number five, fear of getting laughed at. <laughs> Ooh. Number four, fear of thunder and lightning. 
Number three, fear of big dogs. Number two, fear of heights. And number one, fear of snakes and spiders. Now my heart's pounding. I know, right? When fear shows up, it can actually take over your body. Fear really does go straight for the control system. Mm -hmm. When you face a fear, your brain alerts your nervous system, which triggers the release of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. This causes your blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing to increase. More blood flows to your limbs so you can throw a punch or run for your life. And some parts of your brain are so busy amping up your body that the thinking part of your brain can shut down. Wow. No wonder we make such terrible decisions when we're afraid. Yep, but there are things that we can do to face our fear. Like we can breathe. Deeply and slowly. And we can also ask questions about our fears. Like, what do I really think that bedpost is gonna do to me? <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, great, great job holding up the bed. You can even plan baby steps to face your fear, a little bit at a time. Hey, what are you afraid of? Um, crickets. What? Yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? Um, <laughs> a cricket. Oh. Oh, this is great. You can face your fear right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just gonna lift the box up really slowly. And then I'm just gonna open it really slowly. Ah! Maybe after the story. <laughs> well, okay, it's time for the story. Today, we're in the fourth book of the Old Testament, Numbers. God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites, and give them a home in the land of Canaan. God delivered them from slavery in Egypt, leading them through the Red Sea. In the desert, God showed deep love by giving the Israelites food and water. God also gave them rules to show them how to love God and love others. At last, God led the people to the very edge of Canaan, the Promised Land. And that's where our story starts. Let's go. Hey everyone. Hi, Hi Brian. Brian. Okay, so about two years after crossing the Red Sea, the Israelites had finally made it to the very edge of Canaan, the land that God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God told their leader Moses, Send some men to check out the land of Canaan. I am giving it to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of Israel's tribes. So Moses called a leader from each of the 12 tribes. Shemua, Shaphat, Caleb, Igal, Joshua, Palti, Gadiel, Gadi, Amiel, Sether, Nabi, and Jewel. So once the gang was all together, Moses laid out a super secret spy mission for these guys. I want you to see what Canaan is like. Are there a lot of people or just a few? Are they strong or weak? Do their towns have high walls? Oh, and study the land. Is the soil rich or poor? Are there trees? Now bring back some of the food that grows there if you can. So just like that, these 12 men snuck into Canaan just as God had instructed. Now, for about six weeks, they traveled the length of the country and saw the places where Abraham and his family had lived hundreds of years before. On their return journey, the spies cut a bunch of grapes so ginormous, it had to be carried on a pole between two men. You can bet that when they showed up in the Israelite camp at the end of 40 days, <laughs> it made a pretty big stir. At first, the spies gave a glowing report. Canaan is super awesome. The land is filled with so many good things. It's practically flowing with milk and honey. Yeah, check out these grapes. <laughs> but we can never go there. The people who live there are powerful. 
The cities have high walls. The people are like giants. Even though the spies had seen many good things, they were stuck on their fears. Only Joshua and Caleb were brave enough to speak up. We should go up and take the land. We can certainly do it. No way. They're, they're, they're stronger than we are. They're so ginormous that we look like crickets to them. The Israelites chose to listen to fear. They went into complete panic mode, convinced they would be destroyed. They even begged to go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb tried to speak to them. The land is very good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he'll lead us there. He will give it to us, but we've got to obey him. Yeah, don't be afraid of the people in the land. The Lord is with us. Instead of listening to Joshua and Caleb, the Israelites talked about killing them. But in the midst of all this chaos, the glory of God appeared at the tent of meeting. God spoke to Moses. How long will they refuse to believe in me? Moses begged God to have mercy on the Israelites. Lord, your love is great. Forgive the sin of these people, just as you've done so many times already. I have forgiven them, just as you asked. But not one of these people will see the land I promised to give them. But my servant Caleb has a different spirit. He follows me with his whole heart, so I will bring him into the land. Joshua was also allowed to enter the land. God did forgive the Israelites for turning away again, but there were big consequences. Instead of forging ahead into Canaan, the Israelites ended up wandering and stuck in the wilderness for almost 40 years. Now, by that time, only Joshua and Caleb were still living to lead the new generation, their children, into Canaan. And fast forward, they did. At the end of 40 years, Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land. And right away, they came up to the walled city of Jericho. But with God's help, they faced their fears, and those impossibly strong walls came tumbling down. But <laughs> that's another story for another day. Wow. I mean, so the spies' fears were real. I mean, their enemies were really strong. Yep, but Joshua and Caleb knew that God had already promised to help them. Yeah, they had to make a choice to do the right thing, even when everyone else was giving into fear. So, what's our part in the story? Well, fear is totally normal, but God can still help you be brave and do the right thing. Yeah, maybe you're in a group where a popular girl is saying mean things about another kid. Your friends might be afraid to speak up because they don't want to get laughed at, but you can be brave and you can speak up because that's not right. Or maybe the fire alarm goes off and one of your friends is really panicked. That happened in my school. Yeah, you can be the one to stop and help them calm down. Right, you never have to face fear alone. When you believe in Jesus and follow him, God's spirit lives in you and can give you the courage to do the right thing. Even if you are afraid. And that's something awesome to hold on to. Oh, for sure. See you next time. So here's the thing, you can do what you should even when others are afraid. Wanna face that fear right now? Um, sure, I mean, <laughs> what's one giant evil cricket gonna do to me? <laughs> Baby steps. Okay. Just gonna pick it up real slowly. Okay, remember your breathing. Release the cricket! <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. When the time came for the Israelites to enter the land, Joshua and Caleb, well, they remembered something important. See, they remembered that God had already promised to help them. And that's why they were so courageous, even when the other men weren't. And that's why they tried to rally the people to enter the land. Now, of course, the other Israelites, well, they couldn't face their fears. They kept focusing on how powerful the people in the land seemed to be instead of trusting in God. Now, look, we've been looking at God's big story timeline. We go back to the beginning of creation. 
where God created everything that there is and it was good and God created man. And we know that Adam and Eve, well, they broke God's one big rule and that separated us from God. We, God and man were now separated, but even then, God had a plan in place so that he could restore that relationship between himself and man. Remember, he chose Abraham and Sarah and said that through those two, he would bless all of the world. And so we've been following this and it really comes down to now Abraham and Sarah's children are now known as the Israelites. And we'll see how through the Israelites, God's going to bless the world. And so we come to our story today. Here are the Israelites entering into the promised land. And we're looking at Joshua and Caleb. They're saying, let's enter this promised land that God has told us we could have. But the Israelites didn't get to enter the land until much later. And we remember, you can do what you should do even when others are afraid. You know, sometimes we know the right, what the right thing is, right? But we're too scared to do it. We forget that God's with us and we start to listen to other people and we think about why they're afraid. And that can make us feel afraid too, but don't forget that God is always there to help us. And we can trust God no matter what. God can give us courage so we can stand up and be brave enough to do what we should do. And when you believe in Jesus and put your faith in him, you have God's Holy Spirit living inside you. And the Spirit can give you the courage that you need to do hard things and face your fears. Now, our memory verse this month is Joshua 1.9. It's something God said to Joshua when Joshua became the leader of the Israelites after Moses. And this was when Joshua and the rest of the people were finally ready to enter the promised land after 40 long years in the wilderness. God told Joshua this, and it's our verse. Here it is on the screen. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1, 9. So kids, be working on that verse this week, and I can't wait to be back with you next week as we continue to learn about courage and to stand. I hope you guys have a great week, but you know the routine, right? Hand up in the air, high five. I'll see you soon. Take care.